Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Other Program Using Scala. In this video, we continue looking at sorts, uh, and in particular, we're going to look at the selection sort. In the last video, we looked at bubble sort, and we said the bubble sort, while it was uh, a sort that we liked, that people liked to write a lot because it was so easy, it was very much something that humans wouldn't actually do uh, because in some ways it was, it was inefficient. It winds up moving stuff around a lot more than you necessarily need to, and that's what humans would really avoid doing. The selection sort is actually a lot closer to what you might really do. So if we go and let's go ahead and bring back in the array that we started with the first time, and I want to sort this array using a selection sort. Now the way that selection sort works is, and selection sort can be written as a min sort or as a max sort, or technically as a min and max sort. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through this array and I'm going to look for the item that is the largest. Or sorry, I'm going to go with the min sort, so I'm going to go with the smallest. So the way this works is I have a loop and I remember the smallest thing that I've seen so far. So I'm going to start off saying, okay, well this 5 is the smallest thing I've seen so far. And I'll remember that. And then I look at the 8. Eight's not smaller than the 5. So I forget about the 8. I go on to the 3. The 3 is smaller than the 5, so I forget about the 5 and I remember the 3. The 2 is smaller than the 3, so I forget about the 3 and I remember the 2. The 9 is not smaller, the 6 is not smaller, the 4 is not smaller, the 7 is not smaller, but the 1 is smaller, so I forget about the 2 and I remember the 1. And then, after I've decided this is the smallest one, I'm going to swap it into place. This is something that I try to go over many, 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 many times with my students. The selection sort swaps the item into place. It does not shift things around. Shifting things around would be very inefficient here. So instead, it takes this item and it moves it into our temporary space. And then it takes this item, moves it to where the one had been, and then puts the one back up here. So now the smallest element is in place. And then we repeat the same thing again. We're going to go through and look for the smallest element. We wind up finding it. It's the two. So now I'm going to take the two and swap it with the eight. Now I run through and I find the smallest element again. It's the three. It's already in the right place, so I don't have to do anything. Then I run through and I find the, the smallest thing. And note that each time I'm ignoring all the stuff that I have put into sorted order at the beginning. So for here, I'm only looking at the, uh, the last six elements, and I'm ignoring the first three. I find that the four is the smallest. So I take the four and I move it down. And then the eight swaps over, and the four comes up. As I said, this is actually a sort that you might really do. Okay? If I gave you a bunch of file folders, while you probably wouldn't be extremely methodical about doing exactly a min sort, which, you know, which is what I'm doing here, you might come close to it. You might actually go through and look and find the smallest element and then take that element and move it to the front or maybe put it off in a separate pile. So after we swap the 7 and the 8, we look, the 8 is the smallest, it's in the right place, and at that point we stop. There's no need to check for the 9 because it's the last thing and everything else is in the right place, so it has to be in the right place as well. So that illustrates the usage of the selection sort. Uh, now let's look at what the code for this would, would look like. So let's go back into our sorts. And I'm going to write a min sort. It is going to take an array of double. And just like our bubble sort, it doesn't return anything. It just alters the array. So also like the bubble sort, this sort has basically two loops to it. And first I'm going to write them as nested loops so that you can see that. And then we'll probably modify it to use a single loop with uh, with multiple generators in it instead. So our outer loop basically specifies how many times this happens. 
And in some ways you can picture it as being the question of where is the item that we are, where, where is the location that we want to swap our next item into? So when I went through and I found the one, I swapped it to index zero. And then I went through and I found the two and I swapped it to index one. And so that's exactly what I want to do here is I want to go from zero until ARR dot length minus one. And that minus one is in there again because after I have put in uh, in minus one elements and there's only one element left, if all the others are in the right place, it has to be in the right place as well. Now the next thing that I do in here is I am going to run through all the elements and I need to find the minimum. And I kind of tried to illustrate the fact that part of what this requires is finding a I have to keep track of the smallest thing that I've seen so far. And so I'm going to create a variable min, and I'm going to set it to be i plus 1. Uh, actually, no, let's set it to be i, sorry. So I'm going to swap whatever it is into the ith position, and I'm just going to assume to start off with that the thing at the ith position is the smallest thing I've seen. If it's the only thing I've seen, it's the smallest thing I've seen. And so then I have a for loop where j uh, goes from i plus 1 until arr dot length. And inside of here, I want to check. And I want to say if AR, arr sub j happens to be less than arr sub min, well, then I need to change min. I've just found something that was smaller than what I thought was my minimum. So the, that index, the index of this new thing, becomes the, the smallest one. That's all that this inner loop does here. It does a comparison, and it assigns this variable. It doesn't actually change the array in any way, shape, or form. And that's a bit different than the bubble sort, where inside of this inner loop, we had the ability to change the array. We come down here to the end. If min is not equal to i, then I want to actually do my swap. val temp equals arr sub, and here I am swapping the location at i with the location at min. Okay, so it's basically the same three lines of code that we had up here. These three lines of code swapped the, what was it, location j with what was it, location j plus one, these three lines swap what's at location i with what's at location min. So I can come down here and test it out. Make a call to min sort instead of bubble sort. And if I run this, so we start off, once again we have random values, they're not in any particular order. 0.04 0.17, 0 0.1763, 1764, 1, 2, or, oh, 0 0.23, 0 0.26, 0 0.268, 0 0.273, boom, 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 all the way up to the end. Yes, they are all in order. So we have a functioning min sort here. Uh, now this isn't technically a very exhaustive test. Uh, we didn't verify that it that it works on really big arrays. We just verified that it works on this little array with 20 elements. Um, we'll revisit that, how we could make sure that these things actually work a little bit better, do more exhaust, uh, exhaustive testing. You can probably see just from looking at this code that indeed one of the reasons why we like the, the bubble sort is because of its simplicity. Now right now it's gaining a little bit of an advantage because I haven't condensed this down to a single for loop with multiple generators. Uh, actually, in fact, now that I look at it, I can't in this case, can I? Um, it worked really nicely for the last one. But because this, so if, if the, all of this could be put in with the multiple generators, but this is only inside of the, the, the outer loop. It's not inside of the inner loop. So that causes us a problem. We have to leave it in, in this form. Now, once again, 
the advantage, Minsort has a certain advantage over bubble sort. It is actually something that you would consider doing with, with items. In fact, if you were moving cars in a parking lot, you would almost certainly do a Minsort. And the reason is, sim is basically because the swap here is not in the inner loop. This swapping, the whole, you know, pull a car out, put it in the, in the temporary spot, move a car over, pull the car from the temporary spot into the, back into the main line, that whole bit of work, that's something that, that takes a lot of time. And this sort only has to do that order n times. Okay? It might do it fewer, so the most it's ever going to do it is n minus 1 times. It's going to do n minus 1 swaps, worst case. Uh, but and in, the, and in better cases, it will find things at the minimum location several times. We actually had that happen in our, in our example that we sorted. So this is a sort that, in some ways, it minimizes how much you move things around in the array. It turns out that's not hugely significant for Scala when we're sorting arrays in memory. But there are situations where it can be significant. Um, and, and in those situations, if the, the selection sort really can be advantageous. Uh, technically, it does just as many comparisons as, as the bubble sort. This, this, the comparison here happens exactly as many times as the comparison here. Uh, so, so you don't get an advantage in that. And so if, if your comparison function were expensive, then min sort and bubble sort would, would effectively take the same amount of time. However, if your memory moves are expensive, if moving things around in your array is expensive, then the, the min sort is going to be, do a much, much better job than the bubble sort, generally. So that's it for this video. We'll come